Hey there, this is David from the True Blue Sand Blog again. And uh, this time we're going to be cutting down some small ash trees that have emerald ash borer and are mostly dead. And, uh, you know, cutting a small tree, you do the same planting you do on a big one. Uh, the big difference on a small one is they don't look as threatening. Uh, but you have less wood to work with when you're setting it up, so you have to really think about it. And, uh, you know, the same thing applies here as with a big one. There's an ash. That's actually two ash trees, a little one and a one that's about six inches in diameter. Got another one over here, it's about four. Got another one over here, it's about four inches diameter. Got several of them. The uh, big thing here is we got a nice pumpkin over here. <laughs> First thing you look for around a tree are your safety hazards, and I sure don't want to hit that pumpkin, but uh, shouldn't be any problem. Uh, I'm going to aim it pretty much where I have the camera right now. We're going to drop this one first. This one wants to fall straight at the pumpkin, so I've got to aim it a little bit south of the pumpkin. It's about a four or five inch diameter tree, and I'm going to do the same thing I planned on the other, make an open face cut straight through from the back and I'm going to move this up here where hopefully we can see the stump as I cut yeah there we go and I'll work from the other side so you can watch the cutting okay here we go oh there he is right now Hey there, we are back. We've had an interruption of several days since the first part of this. And uh, anyway, we actually got interrupted. A guy from uh, Channel 3 News down at uh, Marion came by and he was uh, he took pictures of this. He wanted to know all about ash and ash yellow or uh, emerald ash borer. And we got lucky. Uh, we uncovered the sapwood here, we peeled bark off. And you can see insect galleries all over there. Let me zoom in on that for you. You can really see what that emerald ash borer does to a tree. It's really something. They put galleries all over that. And they uh, essentially girdle that tree from one end to the other. They start out at the tips and work their way down. And as these trees die, they, uh, the tips die, they uh, try to reestablish a crown often by putting up sprouts down low, and you see that dead bunch of leaves on that little tree. It, you know, put those out, and then those choked and died. So anyway, that's uh, we got lucky there. We got some good galleries, and it made some for some a good TV segment for the guy. And what we're going to do now is we got these two little ones. We're going to drop those and. Want to miss that pumpkin over there. Going to miss the pumpkin, so we're going to aim this right toward the top of that first ash we dropped. Going to aim right toward that. It'll brush through the bur oak crown. Shouldn't cause any problem. So I'm going to work from this, uh, from the right side of that tree. I'll have the other little camera going so you can see the others, other view of it. I'll zoom right in there and uh, I'm going to make the face cut. Well, on the little one, I'm going to make a face cut, back cut, and drop it. And the second one, 
after I bore after I make the face cut, I've got to decide if I'm going to do a regular bore cut and out the back, or if I'm going to do one of my angled bore cuts. I think there's plenty of room there, so I will uh, probably just use a regular horizontal bore cut. So, ready to fire up as soon as I get this other camera going. There we go, and got that one recording. Okay. And this one's recording. Okay, we're going to fire up here and drop those. up here and we punched that yeah, let's see I don't have a tape hey we got a hinge there about seven or eight inches long and you can see let me zoom in on that zoom in on that just a bit so we bored through right here or through right here and cut out the back so got the hinge established and then cut out the back and the forward weight made her go right over. Really, that was a real easy one. They're easy if you know how to do it. And you see it missed the pumpkin, so we're good. Hey. Okay. Stop this one. Okay, we'll turn this camera around. Anyway, that worked out real good. Um, it was just that was a simple make an open face Make a hinge no more than an inch in thickness. It's about seven or eight inches long uh, We got a DBH on this of about six. So actually our hinge exceeded the diameter at breast height and uh, let me Scoot this over again And uh, 
zoom in on it you can see we punch through that and I punch straight rather than punch at an angle and then line it up I punch straight and then right out the back and and there she's down now I just got to cut her up and what I'll typically do on these start at the upper end if you start at the upper end you you're taking load off all the time every cuts fairly easy you know get the branches off cut small pieces work your way back and and there's the pumpkin pumpkins not hurt a bit okay make your cut safe wear your safety gear I got on my chaps I got on my boots uh, I got the hat ear protection eye protection face protection and uh, I don't always wear gloves. I wore gloves this time. You, you got to wear gloves if you're handling the chain or if you're in places where you might get snapped by briar or cut by briars. Um, if you're hanging on with both hands like you should, uh, you don't actually need gloves in good cutting, con good working conditions. But it's good to have them with you because there are times when you handle that chain, you got to have them. So anyway, got a little work to do. This will split up, make nice firewood. It's ash. We could, uh, we could burn this in a week, no problem. Thank you for visiting, and we will catch you later. And you can see, let me zoom in on that. Zoom in on that just a bit. So we bore through right here, bore through right here, then cut out the back. So got the hinge established, and then cut out the back, and the forward weight made her go right over. Really, that was a real easy one. And you're in luck. We're going to have some bonus footage. We've got another ash here along the edge of our yard. This one's about 10 inches dbh. So we need to have about an 8 inch hinge or longer. Uh, up to 1 inch thick. And it's a little bit tangled up in the top. It goes up into that uh, bur oak that's right behind it there. There's a bur oak there. Kind of goes up in that and it's tangled a little bit. There's a red bud here that had a branch that was going to be snagged, so I got rid of that branch. So anyway, so uh, want to hinge at least eight inches long, up to an inch thick, and uh, because it's tangled, it's got forward weight. It's not leaning, but it has forward weight. But because it's tangled a bit, uh, I'm going to stick a wedge in it. So what I'll do is after I punch through behind the hinge, I'm going to cut out half of it stick a wedge in, cut out the other half, and then I've got a wedge in there to beat it over if I need to. So we're going to zero in on that so you can see the sequence. And I'm going to fire up and see if we can drop that baby. Make sure she's recording. Yeah, she's recording. Oh boy. down, eyes on.
raise my ear so I can hear a little better. There she goes. Good one. <laughs> Okay. Okay, let's see if we can zoom in on that. Yeah, there we go. Maybe we'll just move up there closer to it. There we go. Okay, there's a good stump picture. You can see the where we cut out the uh, face and we got a hinge about an inch wide maybe a little too thick just a little over an inch. Punched it out and I swung out and it only left a little corner when I pounded the wedge in that pulled apart but it, ha it tangled in the uh, in the tree overhead and stood there and I went ahead and had to wedge it over. But, uh, so that's a little mistake. This is all, this is the back strap that was holding after I punched that out and I cut out. I thought I had more in it, but I just had this little bit right here. So anyway, worked out good and it did hang up in the top. I expected it to do that. So that was a successful drop. Went just the way we wanted and that'll make more firewood ash is ready to burn right almost right away so anyway and uh, it is dead 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 all the greenery you see on that that's uh virginia creeper that's a vine you can see the uh, you can see the vines going up the side of the tree there it's all virginia creepers there aren't any aren't any live leaves on the tree itself and if we look around on there, the, the little uh, holes you get from emerald ash borer are very small. And I don't have my reading glasses on. Let me see where I'm pointing there. I see one. There's one right there. Let me lay my knife on that. See a hole right there. Yeah. You know, when you're looking for emerald ash borer evidence, those are the exit holes where the uh, adult beetle comes out. Right there, pretty small. You got to know what you're looking for in order to notice them. The uh, bigger holes you see. Let me back out here. I'll show you a bigger hole. There's a bigger hole right there. That's where a woodpecker dug in there to dig out a larva. So you'll see those bigger holes on it also. But that's uh, that's woodpecker damage there. So anyway, if you got ash trees in southern Illinois, you better be putting them in the barn because uh, if you leave them on the stump, leave them on the stump. They're going to spoil. They're going to rot on you. So uh, go ahead. Your ash trees that are showing uh, ash borer damage, get out there and get them processed so they'll keep that wood will keep for you. Anyway, catch you later. Thank you very much for watching.